Chin. The first time I drank gin, I thought it must be hair tonic. My brother swiped the bottle from a guy whose father owned a drugstore that sold booze in those ancient, honorable days when we acknowledged the stuff was a drug. Three of us passed the bottle around, each tasting with disbelief. People paid for this. People had to have it the way we had to have the women we never got near. Actually, they were girls. But never mind, the important fact was their impenetrability. The unknowable. Practicing his horn on the Williamsburg Bridge hour after hour. Woodshedding, the musicians called it. But his woodshed was the world. The enormous tone he borrowed from Hawkins that could fill a club to overflowing, blown into tatters by the sea winds teaching him humility. Out of the gray hills of industrial barns, out of rain, out of bus ride West Virginia to kiss my ass, out of buried aunties, mothers hardening like pounded stumps, out of stumps, out of the bones need to sharpen and the muscles to stretch, they lie and grow. The radio is playing bird flight. Parker, in his California tragic voice 50 years ago, his faltering lover man just before he crashed into chaos. I would guess that outside the recording studio in Burbank, the sun was high above the jacarandas. It was late March. The worst of yesterday's rain had come and gone. The sky was washed. Bird could have seen for miles if he'd looked. But what he saw was so foreign. He clenched his eyes, shook his head, and barked like a dog just once. And then Howard McGee took his arm and assured him he'd be OK. I know this because Howard told me years later told me he thought Bird could lie down in the hotel room they shared, sleep for an hour or more, and waken as himself. I remember once, 27 years ago, walking the darkened streets of my hometown, when up ahead on Joy Road, at the Bluebird of Happiness, I heard over the rumble of traffic and the rumbling of my own head for the first time the high, clear trumpet of Clifford Brown calling us all to the dance he shared with us such a short time. My mother tells me she dreamed of John Coltrane a young train, playing his music with such joy and contained energy and rage. She could not hold back her tears.
our valley. We don't see the ocean, not ever. But in July and August, when the worst heat seems to rise from the hard clay of this valley, you could be walking through a fig orchard when suddenly the wind cools and for a moment you get a whiff of salt and in that moment you can almost believe something is waiting beyond the Pacheco Pass. sewing by the window hums a song I don't know. I hear only a few bars and when the trucks barrel down the broken street, the music is lost. Before the darkness leaks from the shadows of the great cathedral, I see her once more at work and later here in the sudden silence of nightfall wordless music rising from her room. The train lurches forward to regain its momentum and at last arrives somewhere, a station on no map I know. And I make my way upward through the littered passageways to where the street waits with no one to welcome me. I'll know I'm home. What work is? We stand in the rain in a long line, waiting at Ford Highland Park for work. You know what work is. If you're old enough to read this, you know what work is, although you may not do it. Forget you. This is about waiting, shifting from one foot to another, Feeling the light rain falling like mist into your hair, blurring your vision, till you think you see your own brother ahead of you, maybe 10 places. West through Toledo, on past Flat Rock going north. The sign is gone. Leo's pre-war 39 Chevy four-door doing its dance routine. A little slide, a little hold, a little slide on black ice the devil delivered along with two bald tires and two good retreads. The sign's gone. The one that said, heaven ahead. Or was it Wyandotte? Sun up behind us. Last night dissolving in the brine of light. Coming home one last time. Yes, we are. Oh, to be young and strong and dumb again in Michigan. His Detroit was something else. In the back of automotive, a bare bulb swung above him as he bowed to the wrong job in the wrong place and entered the unwritten epic of tedium. A finger in one hand, three fingers on the other. Yakov, my old grease shop partner, one day hung up his apron, put down his gloves and wristbands, and went off in smoke. He 
If he came to my door now on his trek to nowhere, I'd welcome him back with black wine and black bread, a glass of tea, a hardwood floor to sleep on, and hope the new day brought him the music of silence.